Hey LPS students, uh, this is Michael. Um, this video is covering the second assignment, which is the asterisk assignment. So first thing I'm going to do is show everyone what the expected output of our program will be. So basically when we start our console, uh, it gives us some output that asks how many asterisks should I output. And if I type in one, we'll see that it printed out one asterisk. And if we want to run our program again, um, we can click Y and then we'll repeat. And we can print as many asterisks as uh, we want to input. Um, hypothetically, I think we could even try doing like a thousand. And yeah, there we go. Um, that just shows you how fast um, computer code um, actually runs. So now let's run to uh, the flowchart that I made for this assignment. Um, and I'm back. Um, so basically we need two major features for this program to work. We're going to need to use a while loop and we're going to need to use a for loop. Um, so starting out let's think about what kind of variables we'd want to use in this sort of program. We know that our program needs to print out a number of asterisks and we can specify that number. So um, first and foremost, we'll want a variable that's an integer um, and it's gonna be the number for how many numbers of asterisks we want to print out. Um, moreover, we need a variable that's gonna store whether we want to run our program again. Um, and since we're using Y to run it again, yes or no, N for no, we want that variable to be a character. So it's going to be a car variable, and I called mine playing. Okay, so this variable playing um, will control the flow of the entire game. So while we are playing, so while playing is equal to Y, we can run everything in the program. Everything from sending that first output, saying how many asterisks should I output, um, to the for loop as well. Um, this will be ran by our while loop. And we can restart it at the very end when we send out output, would you like another yes, no. And then if we type in yes, we'll repeat the entire program. Okay, so what goes inside of our entire while loop? the entire game as it were. Um, we're going to need to use the cout output stream for to ask the user how many asterisks should I output. And then we're going to want to use cin to receive whatever number the user types in. Uh, Notice I typed in 1, then I typed in 4, and then I typed in 1,000, and my program could handle each one of those cases. And the reason it could handle, you know, printing 1 and then printing 1,000 the next time around is that it uses a for loop. And for loops, um, basically, they control, uh, they specify how many times a certain selection of code should run. So as you can see here, the for loop that we're going to want to write for the asterisk program, all it's going to do is send out output for a single asterisk. So a for loop, or a program that can, if it's printing out a thousand asterisks, it means that the for loop ran a thousand times. Um, and for loops, if you want to read more about them, you can click on the link over here. But I'm going to do a little ex mini explanation myself. So for loops, they are structured with three conditions. They have initial conditions, and we, in programming languages, you traditionally use um, a variable called, you can just call it i for the initial condition. So you in, you instantiate, you create a variable, you declare it inside of the for loop, which is kind of unique because you're normally used to declaring variables at the beginning of your program. In this case, you instantiate i, you say int i equals zero, followed by a semicolon. So that is going to be the initial condition. Initially, i is going to start at zero. We could have i start at one, or we could have i start at any arbitrary number, but normally you're always going to, to initialize the for loop variable i to be at 
to start at zero. So the next semicolon um, over follows the test condition. So the test condition you can think of is it's going to control how many times everything underneath our for loop will run. And the, what we're testing is um, basically it's going to be while i is less than the number variable. So that number variable is what we declared at the very beginning. Um, so for example, if our user wants to um, print four asterisks, they would have typed in four, and then we stored it under number. So number now equals four. So the test condition being i, starting at zero, less than four, um, will repeat four times. And the way it, it works is uh, it will run the line of code underneath the for loop and then update the variable i. And what we're going to want to use for our update condition is to add one to the value of i every single time our for loop runs. So what you can see here is everything underneath the for loop, basically everything that's contained inside of the brackets, will repeat uh, until our initial variable i meets the test condition, and then the test condition is false. So for example, if we start with i equaling 0, and our test condition is i less than 4, and our update condition is i plus 1, so i plus plus is a abbreviated way of typing i equals i plus 1. So that will add 1 to the value of i every single time we run all the lines of code contained within our for loop, which in this case is just sending as output a single asterisk. So when i equals 0, we print out one asterisk. Then we add 1 to the value of i. So now i equals 1. Then we print out another asterisk. So now in total we have two asterisks. Then we add another value, another value to 1. So now i equals 2. Now we print out a third asterisk. And then we increment i. So now i equals 3. Then we print out our fourth asterisk. And then we increment i, and i equals 4. And now what we can see is if i is equal to 4, and our number is also equal to 4. Is i less than number? Is 4 less than 4? No, 4 is equal to 4. So we stop and we don't run anything beneath the for loop. And we just jump to the next line of code, which is over here. If, for example, you wanted to run uh, while i was equal to 4, you could change the test condition to be something like i equals or is less than or equal to number. In that case, when 4 is when i is 4 and number is 4, it will print out a fifth asterisk. But notice, so I started i at 0 and it printed the first asterisk. So when i equals 3, it prints 4 total. So that, that can be a little bit confusing, but in computer science, um, it, you normally start counting at 0. So um, in the case where we want to print out four asterisks, um, we'll have printed out four when i is equal to three at this point. OK, so that's for loops in a nutshell. Um, and there's also a flow diagram that kind of illustrates um, how a for loop has a condition and will run code blocks and then increment and then repeat that can and if the condition is true, you repeat the code block again and then you increment, so on and so forth. So our code block here is just sending out output single asterisks. Okay, so once our for loop is done iterating, um, we want to send out output to add a new line and then to end the output stream using end l, end line. And that will basically just create another space. This is a style, a stylistic thing. Um, finally, we also need to send out uh, output 
to ask the user if they want to play again, and they will enter a Y or an N, and we can assign using the C input stream to our playing variable. So if they didn't want to play again, they'll hit N, playing is now assigned to the input. And if playing is equal to N, we this while loop that is running everything in our program is no longer true, and our main function returns zero, and the program is over. So that's basically um, asterisks in a nutshell. Uh, again, uh, you have two kind of advanced topics based on chapter two. Uh, I mean, while loops are covered in chapter four, and I think four loops are either in chapter five or chapter six. Um, so this can be difficult, and just respond if you have any questions, um, and I can make a follow-up video. Anyway, thank you for watching, and good luck.